And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. this message mean? The hour of his judgment has come. We are living in a time of turmoil on this planet, wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, riots, anger. Is this message relevant for our time? How does it fit into the present day situation? Let's talk about it. What character do we see in God? What character do we see in the creation? Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. And we have had an opportunity to look at this beauty of creation and how it is so unselfish it has to give in order to receive. When I breathe out, I breathe out carbon dioxide and the plants absorb my carbon dioxide and give me the gift not only of food, but also of oxygen for my next breath. This cycle of giving and taking, this symbiosis, this harmony, tells us something about the character of God. When I look at the gentle flower, the delicate flower with its magnificent colors and symmetry, do I see a wrathful God in that or do I see a kind God with a gentle touch? When I look at the insects of the world, yes, there are elements today which remind us of the issue of sin. But if I put on my glasses through the eyes of faith, I can see the remnants of a perfect creation, of perfect harmony, and of a God of kindness and gentleness and love, where beauty becomes more important than wrath, where life and the beauty it expounds becomes more important than the destruction and the crushing thereof. I can see the consequences of sin in the animal kingdom. I can see the cycle of death and destruction. But I can also see the gentleness in the eyes of a deer. 
And even in those animals that have the capacity to kill, when you get them in their right moment, you can see also the elements of love and beauty in their eyes. There is enough evidence of the benevolence of God in the creation. Worship him who made. Do I believe the word? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Whatever is not of faith, says the Bible, is sin. Of sin, says Jesus, because they believe not on me. Just as Adam and Eve did not believe what God had told them and chose to believe the lie of the serpent, so the test at the end, again, will be an issue of faith. Do we believe? Does that include Genesis chapter 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Does that include faith in this creator God who claims that he created the earth in six days? Six literal days? Today, that is considered fundamentalist thinking and it is to be abhorred, according to some. But the evidence speaks for itself. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. The complexity of life, the irreducible complexity, tells us that God's word is reliable. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And then follows a second angel. And this is a fascinating angel. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine, of the wrath of her fornication. Who is Babylon? Why is Babylon fallen? 
Surely Babylon has been in a fallen state for eons because literal Babylon fell and is no more. And the Bible tells us it would never rise again. But here in the book of Revelation, we read about another Babylon. Hmm. And this other Babylon is in a fallen state. Now, Babylon has always been fallen. Are there any comparisons that we can read in the Bible, any parallel texts? And the answer is yes, because the Bible is a complete book. And when we go to Revelation chapter 17, we again see a woman. And we read in verse 3 of chapter 17, where John is taken off in vision and the angel takes him around, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, that is a church, sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. That is a description of the political power embodied in the dragon, the one who controls the affairs of humanity in the secular realm, full of names of blasphemy. There you have the blasphemy again that was associated with the beast in Revelation chapter 13 that you found in the little horn of Daniel chapter 7, both of which were described as the Antichrist power by the reformers, the papal system. And here you have the church aspect. She rides, she controls the political systems, the beast systems. Having seven heads and ten horns, there you have the conglomerate that you had in Revelation chapter 13, which we have already described. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Aren't these the colors with which Rome decks itself? Is this not the color of the cardinals and the papal system and the hierarchy, the magisterium of the church? And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, is this not what we see in the idols of the church? If you go to the church where little Bambino is displayed, who is none other than the Tammuz of Babylonian eras, the gold and the jewels with which he is bedecked is of such enormous value that our earthly riches fade to insignificance by comparison. Having a golden cup in her hand. Now isn't it fascinating that there is only one church in the world that uses the symbol of the woman with the gold cup in her hand, and that is Rome. If you walk into the portal of the Vatican and you turn to the right into the side portal, there you have the great image of the woman with a cup in her hand. But it is made of marble. But if you walk into the church of the Jesuits, there, on the left-hand side, you have this magnificent statue of the woman with a gold cup in her hand, putting it beyond a doubt. And you also have the image of the woman where the kings of the world worship at her feet, but she is crushing Protestantism. And before the Ecumenical Council of Vatican II, they actually had the names attached to these statues where they said, this is Martin Luther, this is Calvin being crushed by the power of Rome. The woman with the golden cup in her hand, full of the filthiness of her fornication, of her apostasy towards God, her means of salvation, which sidetracks the Son of God. Here is this woman full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, her false doctrines of salvation, which she disseminates, and the people of the world drink down the false gospel and become one with her again. And it says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations, of the earth. What an amazing prophecy. 
The reformers immediately identified the system described here as the Church of Rome. And when Martin Luther had his Bibles printed, there in the book of Revelation was the picture of this woman riding this beast and the kings of the world worshipping at her feet. And she was identified as the papal system. This was Babylon, but she is the mother of harlots. Isn't it fascinating that Rome, under the previous pope, well, he's actually still the present pope, Pope Benedict, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, issued a directive that the other churches should not be called sisters because they were actually children. I will not suffer loss of children. When these documents of unity are signed, Aren't the children returning to the mother? And when the children return to the mother and accept the hierarchy and the structure and the apostolic succession, all of which were denied by the reformers, do they not become part and parcel of the system Babylon? Now Rome has always been in a fallen state and the dragon systems, the spiritualism, which promises salvation even in sin and eternal life in spite of sin, even reincarnation, has always been in a fallen system. But here, sadly, is another component to Babylon. Her children return to her. So when we read in Revelation chapter 14, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city. There's only one church that has been acclaimed as a city, and that is Rome. Because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The standard of righteousness in the world today is not the word of God. The standard of righteousness in the world today is human rights. And human rights comes from the pen of the papal system. Encyclical after encyclical has spelled out the human rights that we have in the world today. And these human rights negate the word of God, no matter how good they sound. Because if we look at the commandments, you can take any one of them. Honor thy father and thy mother, that it may be well with you. Child right has been placed above parental right. But the Bible places parental right above child right. Thou shalt not kill. It is your right to have an abortion. And it is right to be forcing individuals to supply that abortion. Thou shalt not kill. And so we can go down the system. Thou shalt not cover. Thou shalt not steal. Rome teaches that it is your right to procure your livelihood from the riches of others. Thomas Aquinas said it is no sin if the poor take from the rich to supply their needs. So all of these issues are incorporated in human rights and are contrary to the law of God. So the nations have drunk of this wine and have adopted a system of morality, not based on the word of God, but based on the philosophy, the Greek philosophy, the natural law philosophy of Rome. And by signing these accords, Protestantism has identified itself with the system and has adopted a plan of salvation contrary to the Bible. She is fallen. She is fallen. Now before I get to the third angel's message, this message will culminate eventually in a loud cry and will be repeated with great power at the end of time when these things come to fruition. And we have to turn to Revelation chapter 18 to find it there. Because there the message 
is repeated. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. This is a loud cry. So this message of the fall of Babylon is to escalate as we approach the end of all things. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And then the sad injunction. And he's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. This is a repeat of the second angel's message. And then the sad words, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. So the political systems have aligned themselves to the philosophy of Rome. So that which happened in the Middle Ages when Rome ruled supreme is to be repeated. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Today we know that Rome controls the financial systems of the world. It is through the Knights of Malta and through the Jesuits who own the banking systems of the world that they control the economies of the world. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. This is the final punishment from God. When those plagues fall, that is the time when God's people will be relieved from the slavery of sin and taken to the heavenly Canaan, just as verily that when the plagues fell in Egypt, God's people were redeemed from the physical slavery and taken out of Egypt and to Canaan. So these issues are very important. It has become a house of demons. Why? Because the dragon gave power unto the beast, and the dragon's philosophy is in that cup. And if this philosophy becomes the philosophy of the churches that once represented Jesus and his salvation, then they are in a fallen state. And then you have to separate them yourself from them. Now what will be the issue that leads to this separation? What will be the final crunch?